Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined once again by my good friend and colleague, Steve Kern. How are we today, Steve? I, th- I had thought at the end of our last episode, given that we were going to talk about this again this week, that we'd be able to discuss who the winner of the US election was. But as it turns out, as it, at the time of this recording, um, still nothing. Um, we, we've got a general sense of the trend, but nothing official has been declared. Well, I was going to say, we can discuss uh, the winner of the US election. It just hasn't been announced yet. But I think <laughs> it's, it's pretty clear, unless, of course, you're one person who seems to disagree with the whole system. Yeah, absolutely. And I, so I, I think I can speak for both of us that, I, you know, we both picked um, Biden last week. That's essentially what's going to end up happening here. It's just more like the train's moving very, very, very slowly. And, um, you know, good for him because, you know, there was so much hoopla that Trump um, raised about the so-called integrity of the election. So they're trying to um, be as uh, methodically um, public about how they're counting everything to make sure that, you know, it can't be questioned, I guess, at least not not without proper evidence. And look, I agree with that. I mean, I think that the US uh, sort of democratic system, certainly the electoral system, is beyond reproach. And I think really what they're doing, I think, is very clever. And and there probably won't be a lot of congratulations for the way this is being managed. It's slow. I think everyone can breathe a sigh of relief now if they're they're a Biden supporter. There was a bit of a shock, I think, on election night. But it was already clear then that, you know, Biden had the upper hand. And now going through this slowly is actually going to, I think, aid the peaceful transition. Mm. And I think... um, had they, had they tried to rush this or, you know, had it come quickly, I think uh, you might have seen a, a very different sort of social result. But it's great. Like, I think it's, uh, it shows democracy in action. Yep. And I think it's a big tick to uh, the USA. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, we'll, we'll discuss it in a bit more detail, but I'll just uh, say as a disclaimer up front, I've got the, uh, the live uh, map updating to, to the side here. If we do happen to see uh, any movement, we'll do a uh, key race alert or breaking news. Click the music on and all that with the graphic, <laughs> and we'll announce it live. Well, well, we're not live, but anyway, you get the get the idea. You can see how much seriousness with with which we're taking this anyway. But if we do happen to notice a change, we'll mention it. Um, maybe just start with um, the turnout. Actually, that that's actually probably the one of the headline things I thought that came out of it. You know, you've got seventy four million votes for Biden so far, seventy million for Trump. Both of those numbers, I mean, Biden's is obviously the biggest turnout in history, but so I have a feeling Trump's is as well um, yeah. overall. And that's actually like quite incredible. Um, and I think that just goes to show that probably with the rhetoric of this election, that that's what drove a lot of people out. And I think we can talk about polling maybe a little bit later um, because I'm sure that's going uh, that's going to be a sticking point um, <laughs> going forward too, that um, Trump clearly overperformed um, what the polls were saying and he really did um, drive out a whole lot of people to come out and vote for him just based on those numbers. Yeah, well, that's right. And I, I think once again, you know, if you take the emotion out of this election, the fact that there'd been a lot of dissatisfaction with Trump for, for four and a half years or longer um, and the fact that, You know, even Trump increased his vote is remarkable, but it shows that, you know, people in America care. Now, there might be a big divide as part of this, but what shouldn't be overlooked is they all came together to elect a president. And win or lose here, it's great to see so many people voting, I think, and I think uh, it's fantastic that uh, it's probably allowed a lot of people to express themselves. I think there's nothing worse than, you know, not liking your president and you not having voted. At least if you voted and you voted the other side, then at least you can say, well, at least I had my chance, my voice. Now, some people might say Trump supporters might not think like that, but I think deep down they appreciate the chance that they had the chance to vote. Mm, Absolutely. Um, I guess just on the polling, um, now – 
they were projecting like a five to ten point victory for Biden at this point with what is it fifty point five percent to forty seven point seven, so roughly three percent, so a three point lead in the popular vote. And I have to wonder, um, you know, they keep blaming the the concept of the shy Trump voter, so the the voter that won't admit to voting for Trump to a pollster, and that way they they, they weren't able to account for that or whatever. But I'm just wondering if the pollsters um, are really just reflecting the popular vote and in a system where the Electoral College plays such a huge factor um, that they really should, if they're going to continue with the polls, they really have to start rethinking how they present the data uh, because it's not really clo- it's not close from a popular vote perspective. So that sort of reflects what the polls said. But and even in, at the end of the day, the electoral college might not be that close. There might be that nice, comfortable buffer that Biden ends up getting. But it does actually show that a lot of these races were really tight in a lot of places, and um, there probably needs to be a better explanation um, around that, apart from just some simple, straight-up numbers of, you know, he's winning by ten points nationally or something like that. Well, you know, I think it's the changing nature of democracy. We've seen it in the Australian election, the last federal election, and we've seen it as well, I guess, with Brexit. So the pollsters obviously are picking up some things in the modern age. As for the shy Trump uh, supporter, I'm starting to believe that now. I'm not anti-Trump. I'm not particularly pro-Trump either. But, uh, you know, who are... In the immediate day after the election, uh, you know, I was hearing a lot of people say uh, how glad they were that, you know, Trump was looking like he was on the way out. And I kind of felt that, you know, if I'd been a Trump supporter, I certainly wouldn't have said anything at those (laughs) moments because it would seem that everyone was agreeing that. Mm. Quite obviously not the case in the real world. I mean, 70 million votes, that's, that's a lot of support, however you break it down or whatever reasons you think that those people might follow somebody. Uh, so, so yeah, absolutely. there must be a lot of people. And I, but I also think, you know, if I think about it as not being anti-Trump, uh, it is very hard to say anything positive about him. And you certainly wouldn't want to say it if there was somebody very anti-Trump in the room. Yeah. So uh, maybe that is something that, uh, maybe that is something that really is impacting the polls. But, I don't think that accounts for things like Brexit or the Australian election. So maybe there's something deeper about the way that we vote now or the way that marketing encourages us to vote. Well, given this is like the second time out, um, you would think uh, now, I mean, there was already commentary in the lead up to this election that, um, you know, I I don't believe these numbers was like being thrown around. I think that might just pick up more steam in terms of coverage going forward because now it's the second time um, that this has kind of happened. And like I said, I think they probably really need to rethink how they they do it. But having said that, um, you know, you know at the end of the day like it's kind of sort of played out potentially like i think that we were still talking about this before we got on that compared to like you know the insanity of 2016 with hillary's emails russian interference um you know um the access hollywood tape all this stuff that was just kind of this or the lead up to this was actually almost in a way predictable in a way because um they telegraphed out you know the democrats were going to do a whole bunch of mail-in votes um, Trump encouraged everyone to vote on the day from his perspective and then the whole thing kind of just played out um, and I guess because the pandemic um, sort mm-hmm. of overrode all all news, um, you didn't really hear too much else and it just kind of played, it, it, it has played out and is continuing to play out in the way that is kind of expected with, you know, the the Trump vote looking really strong in, on on Tuesday and then um, the Biden's mail-in vote factor coming in afterwards. Well, that's right, and I think, once again, it is important to note that I think a lot of Americans, obviously, you know, almost 150 million of them, realised what an important election this was, Mm. you know, and and voted, and I don't think that should be overlooked, you know. I think because of Trump's personality this and what happened in 2016, this election has been all about Trump, but it hasn't. This has been a very important election for the US, and people have taken this very seriously, whichever side they sit on. And I think that that is actually important because that's probably given a little bit of gravity back to the politics 
and taken it away from the personality. That aside, I mean, uh, one thing I'd be interested in knowing is, of course, Biden had the huge mail uh, vote that came in. Uh, you know, now I've heard that said that that was because of COVID, uh, you know, and, and Biden supporters obviously not wanting to, to have to go through the rigmarole on, on voting day um, or catch COVID or any of those things. But I also wonder, would the would the electoral system have been able to cope been able to cope with all those votes on the day if this is the biggest turnout ever and we saw queues because of the social distancing and that sort of thing i mean it's very very lucky and very clever that uh they did vote early that anyone who voted early voted early because um it could have been disastrous if uh, polls had closed and people hadn't got the chance to vote. Mm, absolutely. I think another thing that sort of came out of this was, um, I guess, the, uh, the, 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 the sort of late counting that's occurred in some of these key states and maybe they could potentially reform some of the way they do things. So, for instance, the obvious example being in the 2000 election where Florida afterwards went back and actually rethought how they actually did all of that. And actually, in this election, Florida came straight out of the gate and had a result on the night with all of their ballots across the board counted. And um, if the other, like, for instance, um, all this um, back and forth with, you know, Trump threatening lawsuits and all that sort of stuff about things not being legitimate, if, for instance, um, these states that are counting slowly, if they had counted them, like, uh, ahead of time, like anything that was mailed in, and uh, they were able to call a result on the night, this whole thing would would have been over on Tuesday night. Yeah, exactly. I, I wonder about that. I mean, but having said that, I think the slow burn, as impatient as it might, you know, some of us probably feel about it, is ultimately a better result because you know those votes are being counted now. When when votes are co- counted very quickly, especially in an election like this, then I think there's a greater propensity for people to, to not accept the result. This way is actually giving people a three to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty day period of adjustment. And, you know, any reasonable person, I think, who believes in the electoral system will accept the result at the end. And and, and, I, and I was just going to say that's an extra, actually an interesting point because there was all, also a lot of fear um, ahead of the election, you know, with businesses boarding up and all that, that there would be riots in the streets and and all that sort of thing. And it feels like there's <clears throat> this weird sense of calm that's kind of descended upon the place and not to say that there wouldn't be elements going out and, um, you know, getting fired up. So like the, that, the Trump crowd that um, went out to the out the front of that Arizona polling place demanding, you know, all the votes be counted and all that sort of stuff. That aside, it doesn't seem to be manifesting itself in that way. I mean, you know, obviously we can't tell what would happen in the next few weeks if, um, you know, there's a real revolt by, say, Trump supporters um, at the at the result. But it potentially it looks like, you know, fingers crossed that it doesn't look like it's going that way. Well, I, and that's, that's why I think the slow count is actually a really good way of just just diffusing the whole system. So if you had a winner or a loss on the night, that straight away is a call to arms. But I, I for whatever triggers either side of politics to, you know, uh, I guess uh, do things that we, anti-social things we don't want to see. If you slow burn it, then basically everyone can see the process and effectively what I think we're seeing at the moment is Trump lose legitimately step by step of the way and I don't think anyone will be able to question that so you know it's going to be very hard after a week to complain about something that happened you know a week ago Mm. whereas on the night straight away in all the passion and fury and whatever else as you say people mobilize straight away and then you get conflict so this is a much better way and uh so far, at least, and let's hope it keeps going this way, it's been a really peaceful and I, personally as an external observer to this, I, I think it's a really positive message to the world about America yeah. as a leader and, and American politics. The interesting thing too is that um, obviously Trump had uh, the usual responses that you would have expected him to have um to, to this result. Yeah. But I, I wonder if um, it actually will... Um, 
uh, amount to anything in uh, the long run, whether it's um, him just spinning his wheels like he usually does to try and get some traction. Um, but it feels like, at the you know, again, early days and whatever, but it just feels like um, no one's buying into it or at least the people that would potentially you know, sort of magnify that, that, that sort of commentary aren't buying into it. Well, it's interesting. And this is the other thing that I think is, is very powerful about the slow burn towards a result is that we've really seen the tide go out on Trump this year. So, you know, he's lost friends over COVID. He's lost, probably lost the election over COVID, I think, mm. uh, to a certain extent. And now He's clearly losing. He's making these comments, and I don't see too many members of the Republican Party stepping up to support him. Yeah. And I think, you know, the fact is, is now that everyone's starting to see that actually he's losing, you can see he's actually revealed for what he is. He's bullying. He's saying stuff that's completely unfounded. He's saying stuff that's ridiculous because mm -hmm. it challenges his own validity uh, in the system. And... It shows his disrespect for the democracy that America stands for. And, you know, because of that, I think that he'll find he, maybe he will be able to tie up, you know, some of the results in the court or dispute them. Mm. But I don't think he's going to get very much support. He's going to be alone. And I think because of that, uh, he'll probably, he'll probably, I don't know, create another diversion and, and run away that way. Mm. Having said that, for Republicans, you know, I guess those of them that don't like him would be quite happy to see him go now. He's done his job and it looks like there'll be a Republican control of the Senate. So, uh, you know, it's win-win for the Republicans. You get rid of Trump and you control the Senate. So <laughs> what's not to love? Uh, and uh, just one final point on that is um, there was, was no Democratic blue wave, which everyone was, um, you know, uh, expecting um, and uh, if there really was a conspiracy to stuff ballots or, or do whatever why didn't um, Democrats do it for uh, the House and the Senate as well that's right mm. and that's right and you know so I think you know I think all of Trump's claims and, and they're being roundly even by conservative commentators being shot down and I think that just goes to show now mm. you know if he can't get any support uh you know, I think he'll even struggle to find people that really want to pursue this legally because they'll be tarred. I mean, you imagine if you were a lawyer and you undertook this, you know, maybe you get a lifetime of work from Trump. But, <laughs> but not no one it. else. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say at the moment that, you know, stepping forward and taking this on as a case uh, could be career limited. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, we might wrap it Except, up. Certainly won't win a Supreme Court position for Biden or any Democrat in the future. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, we might wrap it up there. I'm just going to do one last check-in with uh, the live map. No change whatsoever. So maybe we'll uh, do a quick touch on it um, uh, next week just to see uh, where it all landed because I'm guessing at least by that point we will have a, a, an officially declared result by then. Oh, let's hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so don't forget our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and content there. You can subscribe to our uh, YouTube and Vimeo channels, our RSS feeds, and watch us on any and all of your devices. And we greatly appreciate your visits to our website. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time.